Hello, hello, hello. Today is my lucky day because I just received this package from Pearl Wall, which is full of perfume ingredients. So today I'm going to do an unboxing video and I'm going to open this package. I'm going to find out these ingredients, I'm going to smell them, see what they're like, and I'm going to let you know what I think about them. So let's get into it. Okay, cool. There is a little thank you thing. Oh, check this, bro. So I've got thank you. Wow, there's some chocolates. They gave me free chocolates, bro. That's amazing. All right, shout out to Powwow for the free chocolates. Thank you very much for that. That's awesome. Okay, what have we got here? So, packing material, don't need that. These things I did not order, which is cool. And here is everything else. Right, so... I think this is a free sample, which is really awesome as well. This is one of the cool things about Pell Well, is they often give you free samples, which is super nice. So... Wow, what have we got? So I did not actually order these, but I got whole wood oil, which I have no idea what it is to be honest. I've got clear wood, which I already have, but it's always nice to have some more. And then we got edenolide, which I think is a musk. Yeah, it looks like some kind of musk. So big shout out for Pearl Wolf for the free sample. So these look like five milliliter bottles to me. So I'm guessing these samples, they're about half full. So they're something like two or three mil potentially. But either way, that is more than enough to start using them and diluting them. So yeah, super grateful. And then, awesome. Okay, so let's go through these ingredients. So I've got romandelide, oud synthetic from Firminich. I also got the black agar Jivko. Now both of these are actually oud bases, so they're not necessarily real oud. They may have some real oud inside it. I then got some jasmine absolute synthetic, sweet basil oil, cedarwood Texas and Virginian patchouli cathoxal. And finally I have javanol and ginger oil. Now I'm not going to smell these straight away. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dilute them down to 10% and then I'm going to leave it a while and then I'm going to evaluate them just because from experience I could open all these bottles up and start smelling them. However, I know that when I do that, normally all that happens is you can smell a couple of them quite well and then your nose gets very tired and the rest smell like nothing and it's very confusing what's going on. For me, it's a lot more relaxing just to dilute them all down to 10%, give my nose a rest and then smell them properly in a relaxed environment in a nice, simple way. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I've been toiling through the night to get these 13 beautiful dilutions ready for your viewing pleasure. So if you wouldn't mind giving me a like on the video, I would appreciate it. So what I've done is I've taken a bottle, I've put a label on and I've added the ingredient and then topped it up with perfume as alcohol until it's 10%. So I've laid these ingredients onto some scent strips about three hours ago. So they've been developing over that time. Now we should be in roughly the mid note region and we're gonna see what everything smells like. So to begin with, I have some cathoxal. Now, this is something I was very interested to smell because it said it had a watery, fruity, green note, and these are all kind of smells that I really like, so I wanted to know what it would be like. Now, 
What I get from this is Seth definitely kind of a herbal undertone. There is something a bit anisic, like anseed and a bit of a basil kind of notes in there as well. But it definitely has a watery ozonic smell as well. So it smells a bit like the molecule floralazone. It does have a little bit of a fruity smell to it too. Now I have no idea how I'm gonna use this, but I can definitely see myself using it somewhere, maybe in a fresh men's cologne or something like that. So we're gonna to have to see. Next up we have Jarvanol. Now this is a sandalwood molecule. So there are lots of different sandalwood type odorants. None of them actually are the smell of sandalwood because sandalwood oil is a very complex mixture of aroma chemicals. That said, there are lots of these sandalwood aroma chemicals which definitely have a sandalwood note in them. Sandalwood molecules are good for recreating the sandalwood oil. The reason for this is firstly it's very expensive and secondly lots of sandalwood trees are endangered and there is risk of deforestation which means it can sometimes be more ethical to make your own sandalwood accord instead of the actual natural product depending on where it was sourced from. Now for me this definitely smells like other sandalwood molecules I have. So santalith is one which comes to mind immediately. It smells quite close to ebonol as well which is another sandalwood molecule. It smells creamy and woody but it doesn't smell really strongly woody like a cedar wood. So yeah I think a lot of potential here. Next we have edenolide. Now the edenolide has almost gone from the scent strip. So what I'm going to do is put some on again so I can smell it fresh out of the bottle. Now to me that scent strip smells of ethanol for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to the side for a few minutes and then I'm going to come back to it when hopefully some of the ethanols evaporated off and I should actually be able to smell the edenolide itself. Another molecule that I've got here is romandolide. Now this is a musk which I was interested to smell because I wanted to increase my vocabulary of musks as such in my collection. Now this is very, very soft, very subtle, but to me this smells soft, smooth, like I would expect in a musk. So I'm sure this could be used in a wide variety of base notes. I'm gonna to have to experiment with it in some blends and see what happens. And now I'm gonna come back to the edenolide. So now some of that ethanol has evaporated off. The edenolide, it has a damascone smell which is a family of chemicals found in rose, though to me on their own they smell quite apple-y and a little bit plasticky and it definitely has that kind of smell. But this is also sometimes classed as a musk or a musk with top note impact and I can kind of see that as well. Okay, so that is the four aroma chemicals I got. Now onto the three bases. So the first one of the bases is Jasmine 4, which is a Ferminich Jasmine Absolute recreation. Now, I haven't actually smelled Jasmine Absolute, so I won't be able to tell if this smells similar to the Jasmine Absolute or not, but I have smelled Jasmine, so I will be able to know if it's like that. This is interesting because when you smell it, you can definitely see that it smells of Jasmine. There's no denying that. However, it also doesn't smell quite right in a sense. You know, it doesn't smell quite like real Jasmine. Now, it must be quite hard to make a good jasmine recreation. Definitely starts off quite nice, though the more you keep smelling it, the worse it gets, I find, which is strange. So there must be something in here which is causing kind of an olfactory fatigue, and when you're getting used to that, the mixture is becoming more unbalanced to your perception as such. Anyway, so I'm quite undecided on this one, but what I will say is I think I'm gonna have to try in some blends because that's where it's really gonna explain to me how I can use it. This on its own, it's definitely not a perfect jasmine, but maybe mixed with other things, it would give quite a good jasmine impression. So this is something to find out. So next I have the two bases. Now these are both oud bases. So there's a perfume that I'm making at the moment for my own brand, which I'm interested in adding an oud note to it. So I thought I would get two of these oud bases and try them out so I can try them experimenting with the blends. Now I've got one from Firmenich and one from Givaudan. These are two of the largest fragrance companies in the world, and these are their oud bases. So for me, the Ferme Niche base, the first one, smells heavier. It smells a bit more animalic, a bit more like a Castorian base that I have. It's So it's more kind of dirty, a bit more heavy, thick, a little bit more smoky, I would say as well. The Givaudan base, on the other hand, this one is, I think, lighter. This one as well has much more of a top note impact. So at the beginning, when I put this on the scent strip, the Givaudan base definitely had a frankincense, peppery, spicy, slightly lemony note to it. This, over time, has gone. 
What it's left behind is a lighter, more transparent oud note. So it's still kind of got that incensiness in it, but it smells a bit more, a bit more transparent, a bit lighter. It's got a few musk elements into it as well, but it's definitely less dirty, less animalic than the Firmanish one. So again, I don't know how these are going to perform in blends, so it's definitely something to try out. My intuition tells me that I prefer the Givaudan one for now. However, that could definitely change over time. So I, again, I'm going to have to see how it goes and see what happens with it. Okay, so that is the synthetics covered, the synthetic molecules and the synthetic bases. Now we're going to start looking at the naturals I have. So firstly, we're going to look at the more top note, the more herby kind of naturals that I've got. That is Howard oil, basil oil and ginger oil. So the Howard oil is the one I got in the free sample. So this is like, I didn't even order it. I didn't have a reason to get this really, but now it's mostly gone now because it's more of a top note. Okay. So realistically, it's better if I actually get a, a new scent strip and I go and smell it from the beginning because most of it's gone in terms of this three hours later that I'm doing. This to me smells a lot like rosewood. Now that probably doesn't help if you haven't smelled rosewood. It's a linalol smell. Linalol is used just about everywhere. Even if it's not used explicitly as linalol, it's found in so many natural products that it ends up being in almost every single perfume that there is. So it's hard for me to describe what this smells like really if you don't have linalol or you don't know what linalol smells like. If you do, good, that's what it smells like, linalol, rosewood. If you don't know what those smell like, get some linalol, see what that smells like, and then you can know that howudo smells like that. Okay, so the other two, we have basil oil and ginger. So for the basil, the basil is quite a top note, so it has changed a bit, but it's definitely got a herby basil smell to it. However, it's also got this kind of aniseed and this kind of eugenolic side to it as well. So it's definitely got kind of, when I say eugenolic, I mean like the smell of cloves, right? You know, the smell of cloves. So it's Imagine you took some fresh basil and then you mix that with the smell of cloves and then maybe you put in a little bit of aniseed. Okay, and then we have the ginger, which is super nice. If you like the smell of ginger, that is. So at this point, the ginger is quite mellow and it's just a very nice ginger smell. It just smells like ginger. So that's perfect, right? That's what you want. But in the beginning, the ginger smells very lemony. It's very, very fresh, very sharp, very zingy. It smells like pepper. It smells like lemon. It smells like ginger. It's very bright, very loud very very fresh so now we have three more things we have the two cedar woods and the patchouli so firstly i'm gonna look at the cedar woods so this one here is cedarwood virginian i've already got cedarwood virginian um this honestly does smell very similar in theory this is meant to be a slightly higher quality version i would actually say at this point that it does smell a little bit better the only reason i say that is because the one i already have has a very slight powdery note to it which is from mystic moments otherwise it's still a great oil but this one doesn't seem to have that. It seems to be a little bit smoother. Now, the other one I got is the Cedarwood Texas or the white Texan Cedarwood. This one, again, smells very similar to this one. However, what I would say is, in terms of the differences, the Cedarwood Virginian is a bit more fresh. It smells a bit more kind of freshly sawn wood in a sense. The Texan Cedarwood is a bit more warm. It's a bit softer a bit less distinctive as well. So I feel like if you're making a blend, a woody blend, and you want to use cedar wood, then the cedar wood Texan can be great because it gives you that really woody vibe without necessarily being super cedar wood, pencil shavings, distinctive. So I think both of these oils are great. Um, I'm quite excited to use these. And yeah, finally we have patchouli. So I've got patchouli, which I bought years ago. I bought some patchouli like ages ago and the reason I got this patchouli was I just wanted to see what a higher quality patchouli would smell like. So this one is manufactured by Albert Vieille, which is a French manufacturer, which are famous for making good quality natural ingredients. And I have to say, I'm very impressed by it. It smells great. It really brings me back to the days when I was starting perfumery because when I was beginning with perfumery, what I did was I had all the essential oils. Well, I had a lot of essential oils and I was just literally blending them randomly together, not knowing what I was doing and patchouli was one of those oils and patchouli is really strong right so if you've got a load of bottles patchouli is one that really leaks out into the room so when i was doing that perfumery everything smelled like patchouli a lot of the time but what does it smell like with patchouli it's got this very aromatic herbal quite kind of spicy top note to it but it's got this earthiness this deep earthiness 
This patchouli in particular is a bit more smoky as well, which I find quite interesting. And it's that earthiness and that smokiness, I think, that really carry through to the base note. So once all of that aromatic zest as such is gone, what you get is this earthy, you could say it's a bit musty, a bit rooty, that kind of base note. So this is one that people either love or they hate, but either way, I would really recommend getting some nice patchouli because it's something that you can hide just in little bits in a perfume, you know, it's like having celery when you're a kid, if you hate celery. Sometimes your parents will just chop up a little bit and put it in the food anyway, and it actually makes it really nice. If you put it in a bolognese, for example, celery tastes really good, but if you eat a stick of celery on its own, it's just like sharp and bitter. Sometimes patchouli could be a bit like this as well. So even if you don't like patchouli, you might find uses just for a slight touch, a slight touch of patchouli. I had to use up all the last of my pets doing these as well, so now I'm waiting for some more to come in the post, which I was meant to receive, but I didn't. Anyway, that's another story, it doesn't matter too much, but that is the ingredients I got. Thank you to Pearl Wild for the ingredients. Um, I mean, I did buy them, of course, but you know, thank you for the freebies and everything. Very good service they always have. So, thank you for watching the video. Subscribe if you haven't already and interested in perfumery content. Leave me a comment if there's other ideas for videos you have, anything you'd like to see. I'll see what I can do, and that's it. So enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.